In this edition of INN CEO Talks, I'm talking with Frank Carnavelli of Alkaline Fuel Cell Power Corporation. Frank, it's great to see you again. You too, Stuart. Great to be back. Let's start by telling viewers about your company and its focus on affordable, renewable, reliable, clean energy. Well, it, fundamentally, we are bringing uh, power to the people. And that's something in this energy transition, this global energy transition we're all dealing with. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we bring affordable, renewable and reliable power to the people. That's fundamentally what it is. Um, we are, you know, there's two distinct businesses that we're doing that through. Uh, one is fuel cells. So we're developing these great alkaline fuel cell units that are intended for residential homes, the average home in, in, in globally. Uh, in addition to other units that will be used for, you know, backup, off-grid um, power generation opportunities. That's that one business, which I can't wait to get into more detail. And the second one is in this energy transition, uh, until hydrogen is available in order to use those fuel cells, uh, the next part is we got into um, the combined heat power business. So we own energy assets. Uh, for example, we've installed a few hundred kilowatt uh, co-generation unit to generate electricity from natural gas uh, in a condo uh, condominium in the city of Toronto, where we are literally delivering, you know, uh, a good amount of their total, about 60% of their total electricity requirement, 24 seven, 24 hours, seven days a week for a 20% discount than what they would have paid if they bought it from the local electric utility. So we have these two fundamental businesses we're developing every day. Well, these are important developments if we hope to address the energy challenges that are ahead of us. Um, you know, I recently did an interview with one of the authors of uh, New Spirit of Capitalism, a book that was published by the Tri Trilateral Commission, and they said the only way that we're going to be able to address the energy uh, challenges of the future is if we unleash the power of the markets and innovation from companies like yours. And so tell me a little bit more about the home uh, power generators, because uh, what you're doing, in many ways, from my perspective, supersedes what solar panels can do because you're get, getting a much better and more reliable source of clean energy. So, so that is a great point. Um, you know, I think one thing to look at is uh, there's a fundamental uh, uh, underlying assumption that I'm looking at. And in all my experience in my, you know, almost 30 years in this industry, the challenge is in this energy transition in this really this movement to uh, a low carbon to a you know carbon neutral economy who will fundamentally pay that bill and what i'm seeing more and more is that the average consumer the average residential consumer is going to be paying far more of the lion's share of that bill than they should and so you know put that aside that's a fundamental reason why we're going after the homes uh, in general is that we think there's a tremendous opportunity to sell them really low cost, um, very, you know, affordable, again, renewable, reliable power systems. But, you know, on the point of the, of the renewables, what's interesting is I'm not looking to, um, not looking to replace the renewable component. If you look at the, the house of the future, or the home of the future, uh, absolutely, they should be the most energy efficient they can be. Absolutely, they should use up all the, all the renewable energy they have on their site. And that is, you know, did you put up all the solar panels you can? Did you uh, are using heat pumps to, to get um, the appropriate heating and ultimately cooling out of the other uh, the environment here, your ground or your air? Um, once that's done, what you're left with is, well, now what's your reliability? What are you relying on to make sure that when you need that power to be on, it's going to be on? That's where we come in. And we are looking to bring that truly reliable green energy source uh, or system that will be there to make sure from peaking uh, backup power if the power goes out uh, or really if a demand energy response market or a demand resource market, you want to sell that power, then you have that opportunity. So I'm not necessarily looking to displace what the solar can do. Absolutely take all the solar panels you can take and all the site uh, renewable power on site. We're there to make sure that when you need the power, we're the reliability that keeps it on. Well, and that was the missing link there in the in the whole solar combination uh, uh, or solution um, to ensure that you did have that power when you needed it. So, so that's on the residential side. Tell us about on the commercial side. Well, on the commercial side today, so well again, there's two components on the fuel cell side. What we're developing is 
Um, so if you look at your at the European markets, Europe is farther ahead of of really sending hydrogen to the home, to the site, in, in their pipelines to customers. Um, and as that rolls out quicker, uh, certainly in the, in the coming years, the the I think the the organizations or the people who will benefit from hydrogen flowing the most will be the industrial, the construction sites, sites that need access to that green uh, energy, probably quicker than it's going to be delivered to their residential customer. So we've we've augmented and sort of augmented our um, our product line to include much larger uh, fuel cells that can be used for off-grid and backup power market opportunities. And so that is, we're in the midst of developing, we'll start with a four kilowatt generator unit, move to a 10 kilowatt generator unit. And that that 10 kilowatt fuel cell is effectively destined for other global integrators to stick them into their generator kits. So we'll be selling our 10 kilowatt fuel cells to them, whether they choose to stack three, one, five, 10 of them, it can be anywhere from a 10 kilowatt to say north of a hundred kilowatt size generator. That's what our fuel cell will go after that market as well. So that's not necessarily the residential, but that's that bigger application where you want that that renewable uh, uh, back of power, peaking power, whatever you need for that site. So that, that's another market that can be quite um, uh, quite valuable in the coming years. So Frank, you're never satisfied with just all of that that you've got on your plate. You also have the PWWR Flows Combined Heat and Power Project in Toronto. Tell us about that. And then let's talk about the, the overall scope of this very, very uh, important and expanding market that you're in. So uh, I started just over four months ago. And one of the acquisitions the company, the board did of the day, which I think was brilliant, was in this market and every retail investor can appreciate that in this market um you know it's hard to put money towards solely towards clean technology that's not going to see any revenue for years to come and so the business uh, the board looked at how do we how do we augment that how do we add an additional revenue more immediately that helps balance the portfolio balances the company so that someone that wants to make a longer term play in a hydrogen play with us can understand that we have more immediate revenue. And so we acquired, um, initially it's one operating asset, but we, we acquired a $50 million sales pipeline of these larger, a few hundred kilowatt in size um, power plants and, and, and power projects. And so, as I gave an example earlier in this one building in Toronto, it's a few hundred kilowatts in size. It uses natural gas, we put it through a combustion uh, engine. So it is a traditional combustion engine and we generate electricity and then um, additionally uh, heat that's used for, for domestic and, and, and hot water purposes. Um, but in doing that, so we can go to condominium corps as an example in Canada, we can go to them in Ontario at this point and say, uh, let's put in our power plant into your building, into your mechanical room, on your roof, wherever we need to put it. And whatever power we generate on a 24 hour by seven days a week basis, we'll give it to you at a 20% cheaper discount than what you would buy from the local electric utility. So Condo Corps love that. So we have a great pipeline of projects, one that's already operational, another one that's signed. So we do have an energy services contract. Uh, we have another um, just under a year to get that moving to uh, completion and then a whole slew of projects behind that. So that business, um, yes, it's using natural gas, but those combustion engines can just as easily move towards uh, receiving some hydrogen in the mix, receiving uh, renewable natural gas. So we can green those units in those systems because they have you know, 20, 25 year service contracts. Um, we can continue to move those assets into a far more renewable uh, scenario. But in those applications, which is great for investors, we are the owner, the developer, owner, operator of those assets. It's not our technology in those, um, but we are installing the capital base and, and maintaining it and generating the revenue off of it. And that's the balance we wanted to have in our portfolio to really balance off this uh, fuel cell uh, play that in my opinion, and I'm very excited, is our hockey stick play. That's where we have tremendous value opportunity down the road. Um, and for investors looking at us, that balance is able to, to help them understand there's a transition to that and we're, we're playing it out in real time. You're also in Belgium, 
uh, fuel cell power NVs. Uh, ISO certification must have been pretty exciting for you as well. You know, it's very exciting. I think a lot of, so that is our fuel cell business is under uh, FCP, fuel cell power NV in Belgium, just outside of Antwerp. And I was just recently there uh, looking at, you know, it's just beautiful to see these, you know, single cell stack running, a double stack, a quadruple stack, and then our current uh, in-lab unit that's running. Really exciting to see, you know, the, the combination really of all these technologies coming into this one fuel cell. Um, you know, it, we have about 12 staff out there, so it's an amazing entity with a lot more work to do to bring them forward. Um, so a lot more news coming out on that. I think what's critical for investors to look at is, and I'm sure you've all experienced it, and, and Stuart, you've experienced it, you, you see these great technologies, but they're not great at enabling it to be replicated and to scale. And getting an ISO 9001 certification on our business development processes, on the development of our fuel cells, uh, was critical to demonstrate to investors that, you know, we're, we're doing this to really scale this business. We're not doing this just to demonstrate once that we made a fuel cell. And uh, it just so I was happy to be out there uh, as we announced our um, the ISO certification. So we think that's critical for people to understand this is really going to move. Uh, and all of the processes, the rigor that comes with that type of certification is really significant to continue to update that on a regular basis and to document it. And that's, I think, investors are looking for people taking this seriously and not just, you know, oh, we, we have a product, I'll never see the light of day. You know, Frank, I think I need a full hour to talk to you about everything that you're going <laughs> working on, because let, let's wrap up by talking about your new joint venture in the production of clean hydrogen, which I think is going to be uh, very, very important in being able to deliver, you know, uh, lower carbon uh, based solutions. Because one of the amazing things about uh, clean carbon, carbon is that you can blend it with gas, diesel, natural gas, uh, and there's an infrastructure in place already to deliver those products. I, like hydrogen really is seem to be coming into its own now. So you're, you're so right. And I think, um, you know, everyone knows about two years ago, the European Union really went large after hydrogen and they've been developing policies to, to really uh, incorporate the turnover, the changeover of natural gas pipeline systems to hydrogen, pure hydrogen. And that's playing out over the coming years and, and you know every eu country is involved in that north america they, they decided a few years ago to take a more electrification approach it's they're not apples and you know they're not apples and apples it is slightly different electrification they're quickly realizing north america still requires other uh, other solutions in the mix and hydrogen is quickly becoming one of those solutions so um you know, if, if you understand, uh, we're probably not going to be in the next few years switching these natural gas pipelines purely to hydrogen overnight, not going to happen. But part of what my objective was when I started this in this role is how do we get our fuel cells to market quicker? And one way to do it is, you know, you can go generate all the hydrogen you want in the world and, and create that supply. But if there isn't a natural uh, distribution, literally, in this case, a distribution vehicle to bring it to a customer, how can I sell them a fuel cell? And so uh, part of my objective was to look at how do we speed up the flow of hydrogen to customers in order for us to get that sale. And one of the ways they're looking at it in North America, and it's not homogeneous where every natural gas uh, utility has the same uh, level. So on average, it's about 20% of their natural gas pipeline capacity can be filled with hydrogen. And so the, all the policies and procedures to enable that are, are people are looking at it and starting to play out. So we wanted to help enable that further. So we partnered up with another, uh, another clean technology, um, Progressus Clean Technologies, and they have this amazing hydrogen separator technology. So the way that it works is just it's mind boggling how, how this is gonna go to market. But if, if say a local gas company injects hydrogen, so green hydrogen gets injected at one side of their system, um, you now are able to blend it, say 20% of that capacity is filled with hydrogen. And that hydrogen flows with the natural gas through the pipeline to various customers. And the way it works is um, if you're running a, a boiler at your house or you're running natural gas systems, it will take that 20% hydrogen and burn it like you're burning your natural gas and it's cleaner because it's hydrogen. But if I have fuel cells downstream of that pipeline and say that natural gas or the 20% hydrogen blend is coming to my home, and the way this would work is 
at my home. I don't want the natural gas. I want it to keep flowing by. I simply want to extract the hydrogen. So I put in this progressive, um, this is our JV partnership, this progressive hydrogen separator, small unit. I put it on my property like a reverse electrolyzer. It literally pulls out the hydrogen molecules, pulls out the hydrogen from that pipeline, only the hydrogen, it meters it. And that's what I use to run my fuel cell. So my house can get purely hydrogen and the rest of the natural gas continues to flow by my house to the next customer. If that starts to take off, which we see that happening in North America, then it enables us to bring our fuel cells to those customers, residential customers, far quicker than we could have planned in North America. And that's why that JV is happening. We're showing, we're, we're, we're really showing two great technologies, a hydrogen separator technology, which there are many, um, to start doing this with natural gas companies. And then our alkaline fuel cell, which is really cost effective compared to alternatives to be able to convert that to power and heating for your home. So that, that, that's the quick version of, you know, we're doing this because we want to speed up how we bring our fuel cells to market. And that's critical to our success. Well, it's what the world is asking for now. And it is through this kind of innovative approach that we're going to be able to achieve those results. I think, uh, you know, it's uh, right time for investors to be looking at your company to see what kind of solutions you're bringing to that market. As I said, Frank, we could talk forever. And unfortunately, I'm out of time. But it's... Uh, it, it goes to show the, the richness of what you're doing and why it's worth exploring more about uh, what your company is uh, developing at the moment to meet the challenges of the future. Stuart, thanks for having me. This is great. Wonderful. Thank you.